Okay, welcome to Travel Mat Lesson Number Two for Final Cut Pro. This is Walt Biscardi again. And now that you know how to make a travel mat and how to apply a travel mat, I thought we'd go ahead and add a little bit of animation and let's add some drop shadows. And I know what you're thinking. Well, yeah, drop shadows. I just turned that on, right? Well, not really. It can be a little tricky when you're doing travel mats. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first and foremost, here is our little travel mat thing that I made in Photoshop, and I'm going to go ahead and use this travel mat. Now, what I wanted to do is bounce around every three frames. First and foremost, I'm going to come up here to the duration. I'm going to change that to three by typing in the number three and hitting enter. Now, I've got a three-frame mat. I'm going to go ahead and just drag it down into video layer two. Now, what I'm going to do is turn on the image and wireframe. I'm going to move it just a little bit, and I'm going to put the cursor here, and I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. Now make sure I select video track 2 so it's on the same track as the other and just use my overwrite control. There's another clip just got added. Now let's just move it back up again and I'll rotate it this way. Use the overwrite control, add that in. Now let's just do one more. We'll bring it down here and we'll rotate it over like that. Now what I've got is four clips that are three frames each. And I've got my little map bouncing around. There we go. Now all I'm going to do is just go Apple C to copy. Put the playhead at the end. I'm going to use the option, click, and then click again to make sure that my auto select is selected correctly. Paste, 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 paste. All I'm trying to do is just extend this out to 10 seconds. So let's just go ahead and grab everybody. Whoops. Let's go ahead and grab everybody. Copy, paste again, paste again, paste again. All right, we just went past 10 seconds. And there we go. Now I've got my little animated matches bouncing and dancing like crazy. Okay, now I want to go ahead and just combine all these into one video layer so I don't end up with all of these little individual clips. So if you've never nested before, I'm going to highlight all the clips. I'm going to come up to Sequence. I'm going to say Nest Items. And I'm going to call this my Wobbling Mask. Whoops. Okay, the Wobbling Mask. That's how we say it down here in the South, a Wobbling Mask. And now all those little video clips turn into one nice clip for me down here. So I don't have to worry about all those little individual clips. One nice clip. So that's nesting. Okay, now let's go up here. We'll grab that shot of the car. Nope, that's not it. There it is. There's our shot of the car. And I want to make sure that I've got video track three selected. And I'm going to go ahead and apply our video to track three. And just like we did in the first lesson, I'm going to go ahead and apply my... Oh, let's see. What is it this time? The alpha mat. Correct. It is our alpha mat, and there it is bouncing around like crazy. And now the only thing we're missing is our little friend, the gradient. So let's go into the custom gradient. Okay, go into the controls. And as you know, I like the color blue. There we go. Now it's a blue and white. And let's go ahead and make sure that video track one is selected and we'll overwrite and voila now we've got our video and the mask sitting on top of our background. Now we want to go ahead and add that drop shadow. Well with a nested item first and foremost you have to highlight it and then you hit the enter key to move it up into the viewer so we can go ahead and work with it. If you simply double click it it just brings us back to our nest and that's not really what we want so let me close that out. I'll close that out, and here we are. Okay, now, like I said, drop shadow. Easy, right? You just come into your motion tab, and you hit drop shadow. Wait a minute. Okay, did you see what just happened? I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn it back on. Well, wait a minute. Here's our drop shadow. See, we've got an alpha mat, and with an alpha mat, Final Cut Pro is saying, I'm going to take the solid area, and I'm going to apply the video to that solid area. Well, when we added the drop shadow... All we did was make the solid area bigger. So Final Cut Pro has taken the shadow and actually applying more of the video to it. That's not what we want. We want a drop shadow. Well, gee, how do we do that? Well, first and foremost, we'll turn off the drop shadow. Now we're going to highlight both the car and the mask. Come back up the sequence. And you know what? We're going to nest the two of them together. So this will be our wobbling car mask. Now look, now both the car and the mask are one layer. Now when I hit return to move it up, look, I've got the car and the background and the mask and everything all in one layer. Now we go to motion and we hit drop shadow. And look, now we have our drop shadow. So now we've got our wobbling car and we have the drop shadow applied. And by the way, the same thing is true of Luma mats. Here, I'll show you. Let's just close this real quick and we're going to go ahead and make a new sequence. 
And what actually happens is slightly different effect happens with the Luma mats. And let me go ahead and grab you. Remember this from our first lesson. So I'm going to bring this down and I'll go ahead and set up another video track. We only need two to show this example. Well, I'll go ahead and do three. Okay. So now we edit our video tracks. I'm going to go ahead and apply this in. I don't want that on one. I do want it on two. Let's go grab our car again. It's this shot. Select video track three. We're going to apply that to video track three. We'll extend the mask out. Now, in this case, we'll go ahead and apply the Luma mat. Okay, there's our Luma mat. And let me just double click it up into the viewer. And let's apply that drop shadow. Nothing happened. Where's the drop shadow? Well, in reality, the drop shadow is there. There it is. It's around the box, the black box. But it's not being applied here at all because we've completely keyed out this layer. So the drop shadow will not show up. So once again, I'll go back and turn off that drop shadow. Turn off the drop shadow. We're going to go ahead and nest these two items together. And we'll call this uh, Luma Mask Car. Now click on it, hit return. There's the item and the car. And now we'll apply our drop shadow to it. There you go. Now you know a little bit about animating the match and you know how to go ahead and apply a drop shadow to them. We'll see you next time.